Do you want to reach the halfway point of your marathon and feel like the race hasn't even started yet? Imagine smashing your goal time, checking your heart rate data and realising that you ran at a much lower effort than you thought was possible. And what if I told you that the best way to run a marathon isn't to train harder, but actually to train easier? It sounds crazy, right? But a massive new study of over 150,000 marathon training blocks found that runners who focus on easy training, not intense workouts, tend to improve the most. So for those of you new here, I'm Russ, a 2.43 marathon runner at the second attempt, and hopefully soon to be a 2.39 marathon runner. By the end of this video, you're gonna understand the four major training strategies that marathon runners use, and which one is the best, why training easier leads to faster marathon times, which is backed up by some science, and how to structure your training plan for the best results. So if you've ever wondered why so many runners hit the wall, struggle with fatigue, or just don't improve altogether, this video is for you. So let's get into it. The first thing we need to get clear about is why do we train in the first place? And what are we trying to achieve with our training? So if we take a second and zoom out, it's basically all about becoming more efficient at running. And that makes sense, right? Running faster, for longer, with less effort. And at its core, that means that the lower our heart rate is, and that's arguably the best measure of effort. So the lower our heart rate is, at a given pace, the more efficient we are as a runner. So in other words, the goal of training is to optimize that balance between speed and effort. So running faster while keeping our heart rate and energy expenditure as low as possible. And that's why easy running is so important. It strengthens that aerobic system, builds that endurance, and lets us increase our mileage without overloading the body. So the real question in context of the marathon is how do we maximize our efficiency over time? And that's where your training strategy comes in. The major training strategies, what are they? So there's four common approaches to marathon training. And as part of the study, the researchers analyzed thousands of recreational runners on Strava, like you and me, and found that most runners fall into one of four categories. And I'll put a link to that study in the summary below. So the first is pyramidal training, and that consists of 80% easy running, 15% or so moderate and 5% hard. So think some tempo work and speed training, but mostly low intensity miles. A good way to think of that is doing the vast majority of your training at your traditional zone two heart rate and below. So like conversational pace where you could have a chat with your mate without too much effort. So good old jogging. Uh, sometimes that's known as the 80-20 rule. Then you've got polarized training and that consists of about 70% easy, 10% moderate and 20% hard. And that will have more emphasis on speed work and VO2 max training, but it will still have a considerable amount of low intensity training too. Then you've got threshold and moderate training. And that's where you've got lots of moderate training, few easy or hard runs, pretty much known as like the gray area of training. So where it's pretty intense, but not all out. And then you've got hit high intensity training. So that's where you've got your majority of your runs are super hard efforts, VO2 maxes, and that leads to burnout, injuries, and slower marathon times. So what was the key finding for this part of the study? Essentially, pyramidal training was the most common among the fastest runners. And why is that? Because it allowed them to train to a higher mileage without excessive fatigue. So that asks the question, why faster runners train easier? So here's where it gets interesting. Faster runners don't train harder, they just train smarter. And the study found that instead of increasing speed work, faster runners simply ran more easy miles. And in general, the faster the runner, the more easy miles they ran, right? So the faster the runner, the more easy miles they ran. So give you some examples. A three hour marathoner averages 55 kilometers a week. That's about 34 easy miles. A three hour 30 marathoner averages about 40 kilometers a week. That's about 25 easy miles. And a four hour marathoner averages about 30 kilometers. That's about 19 easy miles a week. So the difference between a three hour and a four hour marathoner isn't speed training, it's more easy running. Now think about that. If you're training for a marathon, adding more easy miles is the simplest and most effective way to improve. So what's the role of hard workouts? I hear you say, does this mean you can skip those hard workouts altogether? Absolutely not, but they should be used sparingly. So the study showed that too many hard workouts led to fatigue, injury, and slower recovery. 
easy runs build endurance and efficiency without that wear and tear that you get from those harder runs. And the better runners spend up to 80% of their training time in the easy zone. So the lesson, one to two hard workouts per week is enough. More than that, you're gonna risk overloading on threshold and VO2 max runs because they feel productive. The best improvement that you actually can get come from long, slow runs. So you'll still gain plenty of running efficiencies like increasing your lactate threshold and your VO2 max utilization, which are more important towards the end of the race, but the rest of the time you're best spent running slow. So let's talk about the science behind pyramidal training. So the fastest runners in the study didn't train harder, they trained longer. And most of that extra mileage was in your traditional zone two and below. So the key findings were that the amount of moderate to high training was the same across everyone. So basically everyone did the same amount of tempo, threshold, VO2 max type work. So think like zone three and above in your traditional model. So what's the biggest difference? That the fastest runners in the study did three times more easy zone two and below training than the slowest runners. So let's unpack that to make it crystal clear. Training longer at an easy effort, so zone two and below, is the key to faster marathon times. So this all makes sense when you consider how endurance actually works. So what easy running does is it builds our aerobic capacity. It increases what's called our mitochondrial efficiency too. And without going too deep, that's essentially how efficient our body generates something called ATP. ATP is the primary energy source for our cells. And also it improves our fat burning capability. So these are the most important aspects to improve your marathon. Remember, you're running a marathon, not a park run. So in short, easy running builds a foundation for your marathon success. What are some common objections and misconceptions? So some runners might say, but elites do speed work all the time. Yeah, but they also run 100 miles plus a week. So the bulk of their training is still super easy. And if you look at the percentage of how much speed work they do versus the average recreational runner, probably do about the same percentage, if not less. Another one is, doesn't harder effort training make you stronger? Yeah, it does, but only in small doses. So too much and you'll burn out. Harder effort training is more suited to shorter races like 5K, not a marathon. Yeah, I get all that, but I want faster results. Unfortunately, you cannot hack a marathon. Patience wins in marathoning. Training smarter, not harder, is the key. But you can look at it another way. The hack is that you get to run faster by doing easy miles, which most of us find less difficult. It just takes up a bit more time. But when I run slow, my heart rate still goes too high. Look, low heart rate training does require patience to build, and often slow running may elevate your heart rate above that target zone. In which case, if you need to walk for a minute or so, just to bring your heart rate back down, do it. Don't be a slave to your pace be a slave to your heart rate. Running to a low heart rate, zone two or below, is boring. Look, I'm with you, but position it differently and treat this as your time to mentally reset. Life's got a lot of pressures and this is the perfect time that you get to yourself. Put on a podcast, zone out completely. Sometimes when I get back from an easy run, if someone was to say to me, what did you think about? I can honestly say, nothing at all. I just spend the time decompressing. But if that still doesn't float your boat, get a training partner to run with and someone to chat to. Remember, zone two and below is a pace where you should be able to hold a conversation. So if you're struggling with training and ever in doubt, the easiest thing to think of is just to run more easy miles. That is your fallback option. What is the secret to marathon success? Firstly, can I ask that if you're working towards your marathon and finding this video useful, hit the like button and subscribe because there's gonna be plenty more content to come around the marathon. And also please post in the comments about upcoming marathons you're training for and any questions you might have. All right, so back to the question, what is the secret to marathon success? And we're gonna put that into one sentence and it's real simple. Run more, but slower. The fastest runners in the study did three times more easy zone two and below training than the slowest runners. And that should tell you everything. So if you take one thing from this video, more easy miles results in a better marathon performance. Thanks for watching. Torah.